Microsoft releases Server 2025. Have you seen what it looks like? Is it something you should upgrade to? Well, stay tuned to find out and learn out more. Oh, it's black burning tech, we're leveling up. From networking paths to systems we trust. Let's break it down, let's build it back. Together we're learning, right on track. All right, so like as I teased in the intro, Microsoft released Windows Server 2025. Is it worth it to upgrade or not? Ultimately, it's your discretion. Depends on what you have going on. But let's take a look at what their documentation says, see what's going on, and then we'll even jump into a live demo that I have of it, and we can kind of get a good feel, see if it's something you need. There's a few features I can say I kind of like, but let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so from their documentation page, here's the quick overview. I'll drop this link in the video description as well. But as you know, you can go ahead and get it for free and try it out whether you want it on Azure. So some of the key improvements according to them is more hybrid environments. So if you're bridging with Azure or you're doing some other cloud-based solutions, especially with Azure because it's their product, obviously. And they have some enhanced security, which I, I can say I, I can understand some of the need for. Um, from here, it doesn't really go into great document detail on what it is. But it, after looking at some of it, I, I can understand some of it. Some of the modern features, I can say I, I understand fine. You're going to make it look more more professional, more updated with what today's operating systems look like. Some of them I don't understand, like um, convenience at, like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Typically, if you have a server, you're not having it on Wi-Fi, but maybe in some circumstances that might be a better solution. Um, the performance area I can definitely understand. I do like that, um, where you can do some GPU partitioning and uh, the hot fixes, so that way... I do like that, so that way we don't have to shut down our servers as much. I'm assuming we'll still have some of them, but I think that for the most part, it definitely looks like it can be pretty decent. They still have their server core and server desktop experiences, and as you can see, the different language packs and the uh, evaluation options. As far as the prerequisites, what you need, with such as your system requirements, it's listed here. It will also have, like I said, it'll be in the video description. It doesn't, it's essentially if you can run just a normal uh, server instance, you can run this one. I currently have it running on my server as a, a virtual machine and it works just fine. And so let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like. All right, so we're here. I have made a few changes just so the way I can make this easier to see on on camera for you. Uh, I did enable RDP and I do have this already connected. Um, as you can see, I'm still in the evaluation copy down here. And essentially, if you're familiar with Windows 11, it basically looks like Windows 11. Uh, some of the key features that I've seen from reading the release notes is that it, if you're running like a Hyper-V, it'll default to generation two. Uh, some of the uh, transport protocols that it uses for like for like SMB, it will use the quick protocol. So they said that it'll make it faster and more scalable and reliable. I personally haven't tested that out. As far as installing stuff, this is a base install. I don't really have anything installed in here. As you can see, you still have your server manager. Essentially, it still acts, smells, and behaves the same as any other version of it. Those are the only two areas that I've noticed. The GUI has changed and I haven't tried it yet, but I think it'd be fun to try and see if I can run a uh, some Ubuntu versions on here too. So maybe I can containerize some other additional stuff and uh, run some Docker. But like I said, I don't haven't really done too much on here as far as this is just a base install. On my uh, one of those servers at work, I have installed the Hyper-V services on it and I've tested it out and it seems to be working pretty well. As far as updates, it seems like it's still getting a ton of updates right away. Uh, obviously, it's a brand new OS, so you expect it to have a few quirks with it. But overall, it's been pretty reliable. Like I said, it it's not that big of a difference from what I've noticed from like the release documentation and what they were saying. I'm pretty sure if you're already running 2022 or 2019, it's going to be very similar for your environment. Uh, as Microsoft has mentioned before that 
They are did make a few changes on as far as your upgrade paths to it. Um, then those are listed in that uh, documentation I just had up on the screen a little bit ago. That it'll they make it easier for you to upgrade to this OS or to this version. Um, so if you're on an older version, just definitely take note of that. Like I said, there's a few minor changes, but ultimately it looks more like it's just a GUI change and slight conveniences is what I've noticed so far. So other than that, let me go ahead and pull back, share my screen again, and I'll show you the, their uh, other documentation they have on this. And it's essentially in this article, this is the fewer areas that they've improved, the desktop experience and the upgrade. They have added some advanced multi-layer security. Uh, the Hyper-V area, of course, has been a, changed a little bit, as I just mentioned. They did add, add some AI analytics, I think, into it, and uh, some storage, but basically nothing too crazy. They did, did add some software-defined networking involvement. Um, I honestly, as far as the Windows containers, I'm not that familiar with it. I, we, I haven't ran it that much. And uh, the Server Insider program. But I'll also drop this link in the description and it'll kind of give you a, a brief overview of what's going on and what all has changed, like what the pinned apps is. Like I said, there's quite a bit of some stuff that they said has changed, but for, some, for most people from what I've realized is that it's not as major of changes, but I could be wrong. It also depends on your environment. But from where I've been at, it doesn't look like it's going to be that big of a change for us to implement it in. So I'm curious on what you think, but for what works well for your environment, would this be a good solution for uh, your environment just to be able to drop it in and start running it in your production? Go ahead and drop that in the comments and let's have a chat about it. So I hope this video has been informative and educational for you. If you wouldn't mind, go ahead and click a like. If you didn't like it, go ahead and give a thumbs down, drop a comment, positive or negative. I'm definitely open to all conversations about it as long as it pertains to this content. If you wouldn't mind, thanks. And as always, thank you for watching Blackburn in Tech.